guys, Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. How are you all doing today? The top 20 epic champions so far for the Iron Twins Fortress. Now, I was away in vacation. I'm still kind of in vacation mode. Can you tell by the attire? I don't know, man. Remind me never to wear this shirt ever again in a YouTube video. It's so comfy, though. Welcome back to welcome to the video, I should say, guys. Uh, what do you think of the Iron F Twins Fortress uh, so far? I'm going to do a few more videos talking about kind of in-depth strategy guide for the dungeon, the best tactics, the best teams to assemble. So be on the lookout for that. Also, a couple champion spotlights, a couple legendary champion spotlights who previously were just mediocre legendaries, but now they're insane in Iron Twins Fortress. So again, subscribe here uh, in, in be look out for that content today though i want to focus mainly on the epic champions as i mentioned uh and and, and so far i want to say really quickly i just want to make a quick little side 20 second rant here is just as we kind of anticipated I love the dungeon, I love the strategy, I love that the boss kind of scales over time, the dynamics, the, the everything about it is really cool to me. I love how it's tied into Awakening and, uh, and everything that comes with that and Blessings. However, man, this energy really, really sucks. And I really noticed it on my free-to-play account, right? Uh, if, you're not a, if you're a big whale, like, you're not going to care about a little bit of extra energy. But it really stymies progress and it eats into your progress in other dungeons and other areas of the game. I really, really wish that Plarium would consider dropping or adjusting that energy consumption or give us other ways to recoup that energy. I'm talking like an advanced quest, do X amount of battles in Iron Twins Fortress and get a nice healthy energy reward to help compensate because, you know, for a lot of players out there, you know, energy is such a finite resource in the game that it doesn't even give them the luxury of practicing as much as they want to, you know, in, in uh, Iron Twins Fortress. I really wish they would adjust that. Does it look like I care? Anyway, guys, on to the actual champions here. Uh, what are the key roles that we're looking for? Obviously, decrease speed, uh, cleansers, revivers, decrease attack, increase accuracy. Those are what we're looking for in champions early on in Iron Twins Fortress. So without further ado, let's start with the uh, force affinity, right? So let's start in Demon Spawn with a champion that really everybody gets inside this game. So starting with one that everybody has or will have eventually, and that's Tanix Hate Flower. Tanix is a tremendous champion for the Iron Twins Fortress because she brings a little heal on the A1, which is nice to have, but then she has decreased speed on a three-turn cooldown. That's, again, what we want on basically every team here. We also have some damage mitigation, which makes her, you know, with the mitigation on the passive and the little heal on the A1, it makes her bring a little bit of support. You need all the healage you can get in Iron Twins Fortress. Next up is going to be one of my favorite revivers in the game. It's none other than Rector Droth. So Rector Droth is a fantastic reviver and he healer has the perfect veil perfect veil and veil just keep in mind have damage mitigation built in from aoe attacks so a 7.5 or a 15 percent aoe damage mitigation so it's nice to have that as well has that great passive and then has the uh, a, a, a tremendous single target revival here with the perfect veil for three turns 60 and 60 percent hp on a four turn cooldown and of course we have decreased attack most importantly on the a1 so a you know a tremendous overall champion and reviver uh for the dungeon all right next up is going to be well probably should have just started with him right guys it's the best champion in the game uh maybe period right even for an epic But certainly for Iron Twins Fortress, if you have Geomancer, you're likely already using him. You likely already know. But essentially, applying that HP burn, it's as simple as that, right? Applying the HP burn and then letting Stone Guard passive do all the damage is going to be the best way to do damage, even anti-affinity in every single affinity uh, with Geomancer. So an absolute stud of a champion uh, for this dungeon. I had him in Reflex uh, for Hydra Clan Boss. And I just kept him in reflex, and he still gets the job done. I didn't even turn off the A2. But it's helping because you know how the Iron Twin has that cleanse that he does? Uh, it's nice to have that A3 ready to go more often than not after that cleanse happens. So I still run him in the reflex. Re Relentless works as well. There's um, many different ways you can build your Geo, but you know, any way you build him, you're probably going to get the job done there. Uh, next up is going to be Doom Priest. Uh, a lot of people recommend turning off that A2 just to avoid, uh, you know, especially if you already have an increased attack champion on the team there's no need to have that 
you're just going to be giving a big boost to the turn meter uh, every three turns. Other than that, though, this heal and buff removal on this passive, I mean, with that heal on there, it's arguably better for this dungeon, even than Tawana Rock. I, I don't know. It's probably an unfair comparison because she brings a lot more to the table as well. Uh, but either way, Doom Priest is fantastic with the heal and the cleanse on that passive. And that's really all you need to know when we talk about Doom Priest. Uh, constant cleanses on a Doom Priest. I run her in Relentless, by the way. I love uh, Cleansers, Tawana Rock, and uh, Doom Priest in uh, with those passives. I love them in a, a Relentless set. Next up is going to be not Demon Spawn, but Make It Undead Horde. It's the Mage, man. It's Mausoleum Mage, dude. I, I love you, Mausoleum Mage. And he falls in love with the sausage, not me. He's a fantastic champion, guys. He's bringing increased crit rate, increased defense, and block debuffs. He has decreased speed on his A1. Tremendous. And then we also have a cleanse, and we also have a heal. This guy's a boss for uh, Iron Twins, man. He's bringing like three or four of the things that we really want on our team. You love to see it. And defense is so important in this dungeon. I mean, it hits hard the longer you go into these battles that having around, you know, for the higher levels, having around 3,000 to 3,500 defense on champions is, if you're not going unkillable, is going to be, you know, it's hard to say required, but, you know, it's going to be important to have uh, on most of your champions. All right, going on to magic, guys. I love Claude Beast Feeder. I did a whole guide on Claude. Man, what a champion. Uh, we have decreased crit rate on the A1. We have a shield on the A2, so sort of survivability. But this beast escape, increased speed and increased accuracy on all allies for two turns on a three-turn cooldown. I mean, speed is so important in this dungeon as it is everywhere in this game. And increased accuracy, when that resist starts getting high, it's really nice to have that, especially when paired with a champion like Geo, where you need him to land his HP burn, right? He also has a heal to allies and lowest HP by 10% of max HP at the start of this champion's turn. Turn. So I wanted to give him a shout out there, a champion that I don't see getting a, a ton of love out there in the game, Claude, but I'm a massive fan. I don't know why, what I'm doing here in Undead Horde. Uh, let's go to Jarek, man. Jarek is a boss. He's a beast uh, when it comes to Iron Twins or Fortress or a lot of different areas of the game. He has a very high dependable decreased attack on his A1. He's bringing increased defense and ally protect on his A2. And then he has a continuous heal on any ally for one turn whenever an ally loses 20% of their max HP in one hit. That is going to be the case very, very often times against the Iron Twins. So, fantastic champion. Also has an HP and all battles by 33%. Survivability and HP so important in this dungeon. Again, as it is pretty much everywhere in the game, Jarek is a fantastic choice. Another one of my faves is Sanguinia, guys. I love this champion. Base stats are on point on this champion. She's got a triple hitter on the A1. Not that it matters too much in the uh, Iron Twins, but she also has block debuffs and a continuous heal on a three-turn cooldown. And she has the full cleanse on Sacrificial Lamb, her A3 ability. Attacks one enemy, 100% chance of transferring all the buffs from this champion to the target and then cleanses all allies after that so tremendous champion overall brings a lot to the table i like sanguinia don't sleep on her we talked about kind of well it's hard to call sanguinia a new school champion but she's kind of new right let's talk about an old school champion who is a great option for iron twins and is tayrell guys good old tayrell right he has the decreased attack on his a1 on each hit he has a 50 percent chance he's a defense-based champion pretty easy to keep alive uh you know, relatively speaking. And then he has decreased defense on his A2. And of course, he has preemptive strike. You can really turn this one off. We have a turn meter depletion, or you can keep it on. It does decent damage there. He also has defense in all battles as his aura lead. So I think Tayrell is still a fantastic option for you guys to go ahead and consider. Uh, last but not least, in the magic affinity category, we have Royal Guard. So, I mean, enemy max HP champions are fantastic. Takedown is one of the best multipliers out there uh, for epic champions champion second only to Sept Septimus when we talk about enemy max HP damage dealers in the game you need some DPS on your team every team needs at least one kind of nuker role especially if you don't have that geomancer so of course including royal guard he's magic affinity and he has takedown right so uh, a great ability to have he also has decreased speed that he's bringing to the table and we just talked about why did you even rope me into this because he roped me into this well the him over there he roped me into this 
well, with almost all these champions, half these champions, right? It feels like bringing decreased speed on multiple champions, right? Just having it on one oftentimes is not going to be enough. You need to keep that up there as long as humanly possible against the Iron Twins. Royal Guard comes equipped with that ability. All right, moving on to Spirit. And what better place to start in Spirit Affinity, guys, than the king, the king of Iron Twins. It is Stagnite, man. I love Stagnite. Again, his base stats are incredible. He has decreased speed on his A1. He has decreased defense and more importantly, decrease attack on his A2, all in a three-turn cooldown, and then lead the pack with the uh, the accuracy there. What a great ability to have. If you get resisted, boom, you get that increased accuracy added onto you for all the allies on the team. Stagnite is just a class act, one of the best of the best champions out there inside the game. Next one, guys, is gonna believe it's gonna be, believe it or not, an uncommon champion, dude. It's Armager. Unbelievable. Why is an uncommon champion on an all epic video, Ash, you idiot? Because he's like an epic. He might as well be and I'm going to give you a tie in the Spear Affinity, so there'll be a bonus Epic Champion in just a moment. Attacks one enemy, decrease turn meter, okay, whatever. But he has the two-turn cooldown later rest, right? You book this out, you get an enemy max HP on a two-turn cooldown. Sure, it doesn't hit as hard as, you know, a Royal Guard, for example, or Septimist, or any of the other enemy max HP champions, Coltart. However... Having it on a two-turn cooldown, you're using it every other turn. He's also defense-based and much easier to keep alive than other squishy-ish, squishier damage dealers into the game. So Armager's a great option for you guys to go ahead and consider there. Next up, we have... Oh, man. I'm going to throw a tie at you guys. I hate to do it, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to throw a tie. Wode painted. That's right. Wode. We did a guide on Wode updated, but now with this new surplus heal, if you're looking for raw healage without any buffs, so no turn meter increase onto the Iron Twins, I mean, look no further than Wode painted. One of the strongest healers now inside the game. You could say the same about like Vrask, you know, uh, only just more healage now, frankly, out of Wode painted. So wanted to give her a shout out there, uh, but I, I had to give it to the king. The king of the healers right now it is none other than vogoth man i love vogoth he's a boss he's a beast you can use him almost everywhere in the game and really we could talk about his whole kit it's it's a nice kit and stuff but it's really all about festering dynamo whenever this champion is attacked heals all allies by 50 percent of the damage received that's a lot of damage timed perfectly when you're attacked, when you need it, right? Uh, it's just such a great ability. He also brings a leech to the table too that should not be overlooked. So overall, just love Vogoth. I'm in love with this champion, right? Uh, next up is going to be a uh, kind of an old school champion here. Well, not kind of, he is. And it's Fenax. I love Fenax because he hits so freaking hard. A great damage dealer for you guys. Great nuker. He can be your main nuker. Obviously, no need for AoE attacks against the Iron Twins. Uh, but just put down as one of the strongest, hardest hitting uh, abilities in the game for A1s, right? And then we have the A2. Um, obviously, it's a pretty hard hitting ability. Nothing crazy, though. But the A3, so feebleness. He's bringing decreased defense. And you guessed it, decreased speed to the table on that A3. Granted, on a three-turn cooldown, he'd be a perfect champion to pair with, like, a Stag Knight, right? Between the two of them, you're going to have decreased speed up there almost all the time on the boss. All right, guys, last in the spirit affinity is going to be our old friend Virgis, man. He is a tank and a half, and you guys probably already know this, right? He has the continuous heal increase speed, reflect damage on a, a single target ally in a three-turn cooldown. Ally protect on everybody, increased defense on himself. And then al having a protector, you need to keep him alive. Survivability is so important for an ally protect champion, and Virgis is one of the best in the game because of this second win. A shield on this champion, 10% of their max HP. For two turns, whenever this champion loses 10% of their more max HP from a single hit, and then continuous heal on this champion for two turns, every time his HP drops below 50%. This is booked down to a one turn, man. So this is happening basically every time he's being hit. Uh, incredible stuff there. Defense and dungeons, keep in mind, dungeon auras obviously work in the Iron Twins Fortress dungeon. Uh, so Virgis is great for the aura as well, if you're looking for a little bit extra defense on your team. We already talked about how important defense is all right guys here comes the void affinity so for void epic damage dealers i just want to give a quick shout out man i love genbo and i feel like you could use genbo as just kind of a nuker there he's not on my list he doesn't make my list but i like that he has a self buff extra turn and then a hard hitting heartless bliss uh but i want to cover you know the the essentials first so I want to give some love to, where am I? Shadowkin? Okay, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here, Ash. Uh, I want to give some love to Runekeeper. So, Runekeeper, Dazdurk, 
Uh, my man has a leech on the A1. He's got increased attack and turn meter fill. Eat that, Doom Priest, on his A2. I kid. And then we have a cleanse and a heal and a continuous heal for two turns on allies who have debuffs removed. This is great, man. This is a great ability. We get the cleanse, very important. We get the heal, very important. It's based off this champion's max HP and it scales pretty well at 20K. And then we get that continuous heal for two turns on allies who bust removed. A great healer here, plus the cleanse, Runekeeper Dazder. Don't sleep on this dude, guys. Another uh, cleanser that people sleep on, in my opinion, is Skathix, right? So Skathix is number two here. He has the decrease, you guessed it, it has got the decreased speed on that A1, and then he's got the AoE chance of stealing a buff, whatever. He has the cleanse, the block debuffs, a shield for two turns, and the shield equals 20% of this champion's max HP. So again, some survivability in the cleanse. He's bringing block debuffs instead of the heal on his A3 ability, but he's also bringing uh, decreased speed to the table on his A1. 50% land rate, 55 with sniper, not too bad. Uh, next up is going to be, oh my god, probably the best champion. <laughs> Could I, dare I say, certainly the best reviver in the conversation is Godseeker. Friggin' Aniri, man. She is a legendary in disguise. Let me tell you. Attacks on enemy, heals the alley, lowest HP. Awesome. Uh, an AoE with the heal and increase the duration of all buffs on all allies by one turn on a three turn cooldown fantastic and then we have heal number one resets the cooldown of all of their skills i was actually talking about this on a collab on scratch ak 47s youtube channel but man the resets the cooldown of all their skills on a four turn single target revive just that ability it's unique first of all no other champion in the game has it right and it is such a game changer man like it's actually helped me out so many times, right? You revive a nuker, you revive like a husk, for example, or a royal guard who we mentioned, right? Shout out to husk, by the way. We didn't include him in the force affinity, but a great uh, nuking option for you guys. Maybe not the best, but a good one. You're reducing their enemy max HP skill. You revive a cold heart, boom, heart seeker reloaded, you know? Revive a uh, Tanix. You really need that decreased speed, boom, all their skills reset. So it's really nice to have. And then we have the preemptive revive on death, increase the amount of healing all ash receive as a passive by 10%. I mean, she brings so much to the table. Really, as I said, like if I was going to make a ranking of these champions, she would probably be top. She would be number two behind Geomancer, I think. All right, next up, guys, is going to be, well, we, we cover three. Let's cover the obvious choices, right? Uh, here they are. I can't, I can't miss out on Maneater because of the unkillable, right? Unkillable for two turns on a five turn cooldown. You know Maneater, right? He also brings decreased attack though, which is really, really handy to have. However, it's not necessary when you have an unkillable team, but if you're running, I've seen kind of these hybrid teams where you don't have two man eaters, you don't have a, you know, you don't have all the champions you need, uh, but you run kind of a half unkillable and then you heal your team up. So, you know, the decrease attack in those situations can still be helpful. And then I want to give some love again to as if she needs any love, right? Why, why, why I keep going to Shadowkin for dwarves today, man? What's in the water here? All right, Demitha. Uh, Demitha, right? She has a three turn cooldown, block damage and continuous heal. So you get damage and heals. Yeah, guess what? You get more heals uh, on the A3. Just a fantastic healer. One of the best out there uh, in the game in Demitha. And those heals are incredibly important in this dungeon. As we mentioned, we also have defense in all battles. I'm sure you can probably find a better dungeon aura out there. But of course, block damage being the main feature here. So guys, there it goes. Those are my 20 top 20 epics for the Iron Twins Fortress. Thank you so much for watching. Which of you your favorite epics did I forget? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks, and as always, take care, guys.